Hey friends, welcome back. So today we're gonna to take a deep dive and explore the connections and the importance of these connections between your body's circadian clock system and the aging or longevity process. We hear so much about fasting and protein and the insulin IGF-1 axis and how you know methionine or, or amino acid or protein restriction is linked with longevity, but we don't often hear about how we can fine tune our body's biologic rhythms and the circadian clock system and how all of these nutrient sensing pathways from the insulin IGF-1 axis to mTOR, AMPK, PGC-1 alpha, sirtuins, all of these that we're gonna talk about in today's video in more depth, and I'll promise to slow down and not you know, go too quick with these. All of these are intimately connected to, guess what? Your body's core circadian clock system, specifically the peripheral circadian clock machinery. So we're gonna unpack that. The title of the paper that we're gonna talk about today that I would recommend you check out is called The Importance of Circadian Timing for Aging and Longevity. There's some amazing images in here that I can flash up on the screen and we're gonna uh, talk about. But first, I do wanna thank this video show sponsor, Skillshare.com, hands down the best resource on the internet to learn new skills if you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, a creative, or an aspiring creative. If you wanna learn how to make YouTube videos, how to make more engaging content like for your social media, for your business, or for a brand that you work for, Skillshare.com is the resource that you need to check out. I'm constantly diving in here because I want to make more valuable content to help people like you learn health science and related information. So I wanna learn how to make my own eBooks. And as I've told you before, I learned how to start editing videos and making videos on Skillshare.com back in 2012, friends. I've been using it to make video thumbnails for um, my videos and also on Instagram. But one of the courses that I've been diving into, and this trainer, by the way, Daniel Scott is fantastic. You have to check out his work. Adobe InDesign is how you can learn how to make your own eBooks, cheat sheets, guides. This is the course for you. So I've been diving into this. Daniel Scott is phenomenal. He has a bunch of great courses that you can check out. So the first 1,000 people that take advantage of the free offer in the link below can get a free trial membership over at Skillshare.com. So I, I would suggest taking advantage of it. And one of the other courses that I just started diving into about a few weeks ago is learning how to use Pictochart. Pictochart is a quick online tool where you can make infographics that are really engaging. So this course is really, really neat. I would definitely check this out as well. And again, you can get a free trial by clicking the link below. Where the first 1,000 people will get access to that free trial. After that, it's under $10 a month. So let's dive into the details of your body's circadian clock system and hone in on these key nutrient sensing pathways that are linked with longevity. Now, for a big picture, high level discussion of the circadian clock system, and this took me a while to sort of understand and uh, characterize, is the, the sort of bifurcation between your central circadian clock system that is governed by the suprachiasmatic nucleus in your hypothalamus, okay? So this is the central system that mostly is sort of regulated by light and dark signals. So we'll put, you know, light, and dark okay so this is why you know using a tv in your bedroom or being on your iphone in your bedroom or not going outside first thing in the morning for a walk or a meditation or breath work is counterproductive to affecting and impacting your body's circadian clock system so you must treat light and dark signals you know prioritize this make this a, a priority in your life however the body always has redundancy. This is a theme we've been talking about on this channel and on our videos when we talked about the immune system. For example, your body makes antibodies, but you have T cell immunity too. So there's redundancies if the antibodies decline, right? Well, here's another set of redundancies in your body's circadian clock system, which I think is really cool. You have the peripheral circadian clock physiology that's running on its own on a 24 hour. These genes are oscillating but it's, it's important, this is where the nuances get important, is these nutrient sensing pathways are influencing the peripheral circadian clock genes. So this is important, again, let's bifurcate this a little bit. We have the, the central circadian clock system that is, that is impacted mostly by the natural light cycles throughout the day, the sun and then the moon, and that influences melatonin and cortisol. But we have these peripheral systems, and this is where meal timing comes in and Wait for it, wait for it, the longevity nutrient sensing pathway. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about first PGC1 alpha. So PGC1 alpha is, uh, it does affect the circadian clock genes, the core clock genes. So this is again a peripheral influence on circadian biology. So if you don't exercise regularly, if you don't walk, if you don't compress your feeding window and you can't sleep or your hormones are all in balance or you know, ladies, your menstrual cycles are in balance, men, you're not waking up with an erection, 
Well, you gotta consider exercise because not only does it affect the cardiovascular endothelial tissue, not only does it affect post-meal blood sugar levels and insulin sensitivity and leptin sensitivity, but exercise affects PGC1-alpha, P, G, C, one, alpha, okay? So PGC1 alpha affects the circadian rhythm, the core clock genes. So this is affecting that. So if you're not getting PGC1 alpha signaling from moving your muscles, from exercising, from fasting, or from different nutrients, for example, alpha lipoic acid, berberine might affect this, different things. Guess what? You might then start to impact your body's circadian rhythms that affect longevity. Now, let's talk about another one. Let's talk about NAD and sirtuins, okay? You, you heard about NAD before, NAD, okay, and then cert one. Okay, so NAD and cert one affect the core uh, proteins, the transcriptional repressor and so forth. There's the CRY and then the PER gene, and these are influenced by, by these nutrient sensing uh, enzymes and so forth. So the other key, now a lot of people, let me just pause, okay? This is why if people, if you're, if you're getting bad sleep, okay, but you're paying top dollar for NAD supplements, it's kind of a wash, right? You, you, if you're not getting good sleep and you're not in training your body's peripheral circadian clock systems, don't expect miracles from NAD supplements, right? Now, possibly NAD supplements could be utilized to support your body's circadian clock system or for people that you know work the night shift and things like that. So NR or NAD precursors might be helpful. I'm not a huge fan of these because they're super expensive and you still need to take your vitamin D. You still, in my opinion, need to take electrolytes. You still need to take some things periodically to optimize your sleep. You might wanna take a probiotic every now and again. So there's still some things that you should take and then once you start with NAD supplement, you're already at $100 a month. So in my opinion, there's other low hanging fruit there. But Let's get into A and PK, PK, and then also we're gonna talk about M, uh, TOR. So guess what? Both of these pathways, now neither one of these are good or bad, but they oscillate on a circadian rhythm basis, rhythmically, and it seems that you know they do influence and have feedback, all of these, so draw a bracket, all of these have feedback into the peripheral circadian clock physiology in a bi-directional system. So this is, this is the crux of this whole video, okay? Is that if you're not getting the proper sort of circadian biology and synthesis of this from how you're feeding and fasting and when you're exercising and so on, right? If you're snacking all the time, you're getting up at two in the morning having cookies, you're not exercising, but don't, but don't be surprised if one, you age faster than you should because your, your biologic age is, is accelerated compared to your chronologic age. We talked about that with my DNA. We talked about epigenetic age before. So that's number one. Number two, it could then start to negatively impact your body's circadian rhythm. So you might notice indigestion. You might notice you're sleepy during the day when you should be awake. You might notice that when you wake up, you're lethar you have lethargy, you're lethargic because cortisol, you don't have that cortisol awakening response. You might notice that before bed, all of a sudden you're awake and you're like, let's go. Why am I having this second wind right before bed when you should be unwinding? Well, like I said, you know, this is a bi-directional system. These nutrient sensing pathways are influencing your peripheral circadian clock system and the peripheral circadian clock system is influencing these key longevity pathways. So when one is out of balance, the other is gonna be out of balance as well. Now, you might've seen people in your life who stay up late, Maybe they're a trader, maybe they're a gamer, and they look, their skin looks like, like crap. They look like they're getting more gray hair, they're getting overweight, um, they look like they're aging faster. This could be one mechanism because their circadian clock system is screwed up and then these nutrient sensing enzymes that are key for longevity are getting out of balance. So that's what the data has shown uh, up to now. Now the insulin IGF-1 axis it's probably influenced by the peripheral circadian clock system. I don't know why I had a hard time saying that. It's probably influenced by the peripheral circadian clock system, but we don't know all the nuances of that at this particular time. However, uh, the data is pretty clear on how PGC1 alpha that, that also initiates mitochondrial biogenesis, how that affects the peripheral circadian clock system, how NAD and sirtuins and how AMPK and mTOR does uh, through these new mechanisms. And I'll put these, put these uh, images here so you can see. But to me, I think this is really exciting um, because it, it really reinforces sleep and meal timing. So that's what I want to finish off on because uh, as you all know, I'm a huge fan of, and I'll put it right here, TRF, time-restricted feeding. So time-restricted feeding, in my opinion, is 
is the most effective form of intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting just means like you're, you know, you're eating during a, con during a confined window and you're fasting during a confined window. But TRF takes into consideration the body's circadian rhythm and circadian clock system. And so this is why I like this. It's more consistent, it's more congruent with circadian rhythm physiology. And so I'm, I'm a fan of this. And so what's a good window? And, and let me pause. There was, there was a study in 2019, June of 2019. I shared it on Instagram. I can flash it up here that showed that a feeding window between eight and I believe it was eight and four, or maybe it was 10 and six. It was something like it was an early E, E for early, early time restricted feeding. And basically what it showed is there was favorable changes and reductions in mTOR, increases in uh, AMPK and, and sirtuin and autophagy related physiology. So this was independent of any calorie restriction or, or changes in calories. And, and these changes were statistically significant compared to the control group. So they had a control group who just had, was eating like eight to eight. So that to me shows that, because a lot of people it's hard to track your macros and track your calories and figure out you know where you can lose calories here and there and things like that. It's much easier to just to say, I'm gonna eat during this time and stop eating during this time. So I generally advise my clients to eat earlier in the day and start their fast earlier. So participating in early time-restricted feeding. Now, along those lines, this study, this review paper, I should say, has reviewed many different uh, studies that have looked at and compared uh, time-restricted feeding and feeding uh, time changes. Is that the way to, uh, feeding window uh, uh, influences, how that influences physiology and several studies have actually found over the years and we've we've highlighted them on this channel that eating late uh, doesn't in, even if you fast for a long part of the day late eating uh, is linked with uh, actually unfavorable changes uh, even if you're in a calorie deficit with regards to insulin sensitivity and metabolic physiology and blood pressure and everything like that so several studies what they have found is that as long as the end of your meal Give yourself, give yourself at least six hours before the midpoint of your sleep. So, for example, if you go to bed at nine you, and your midpoint of sleep, so say you sleep you know, nine to five, maybe it's like two in the morning, something like that, you at least want six hours between your last meal and the midpoint of sleep. Uh, I, ideally, I would want eight hours, okay? Now, because we know that food impacts your peripheral circadian clock system that influences the central circadian clock system, uh, eating late could uh, negatively impact your body's release of melatonin and, and that sort of thing. So that's what the studies have shown. Remember, six hours between your midpoint of sleep. Uh, and, and so just having a late night, you know, calories that just, you know, even if calorie balance is the same, studies have shown a late night snack that's just, it's not even high calorie, just a snack before bed led to negative changes when it comes to weight loss at the end of a study. So there were, that was one study in women. So they had women stop, stop feeding at six, and then they had another group of women have an isocaloric meal spread in two different meals, and then the snack uh, was linked with uh, weight gain. So this data is out there, friends. It's available, it's out there, and just want you to know about that. So what's the summary? What's the take home? Well, number one, there's bi-directional crosstalk. We, this paper keeps falling. There's bi-directional crosstalk between the peripheral circadian clock system and many key nutrient sensing pathways that are intimately linked with longevity in the aging process. So we should take care of both. We should be mindful of our body's circadian clock system and our body's circadian rhythms and be mindful of regular exercise, consistent exercise, consistent meal timing and feeding fasting windows and so forth. Because this bi-directional crosstalk, and I'll draw an arrow here uh, to share that as well. Now we know that the central circadian clock system is very, you know, influenced by light and dark changes. So this is why, you know, you want to make your room really dark. You want to get off screens two hours before bed. You want to expose your body, you know, full body sun during the middle part of the day, get that bright sun, and you want to expose your retina uh, to sun in the morning. So basically that's where we're at. Uh, I would strongly recommend checking out that free offer from Skillshare. Uh, the links will be below and also check out links to some of the articles that we talked about today because I want you to share this message because I see so many people cutting out carbs thinking that's that's it, I'm good, I cut out the carbs. That is one piece of the puzzle. We gotta think about our circadian rhythms, circadian biology, nutrient sensing uh, enzymes, feeding fasting patterns. And instead of looking at just intermittent fasting as, you know, hey, I fasted for 12 hours, 16 hours, that's great. Okay, what was the time period? When did you stop eating? Okay, if you stop eating at 10 p.m. and you go to bed at 10.30, that's not, you have room for improvement, my friends. So 
Hopefully you thought this was helpful, got a little out of it. I appreciate you tuning all the way to the end. Thanks for hitting that like button and we'll catch you in a future video down the road. Bye now. Yeah.